All right, good morning, team. Uh, this is the notes for Thursday, 21st of April. Again, I'm not here. Uh, you're welcome to just copy down the notes, but I figured I'd make a quick video um, just so I can kind of explain some stuff more. Uh, some of the things I just wanted to, I didn't put in the notes, but I just wanted to review before we go over, is the difference between diffraction, refraction, reflection. Reflection uh, is easy enough. We've talked about that with mirrors. It's just where a wave simply reflects off a surface. It's bound by the uh, law of reflection that basically says this angle here is going to be the same as that angle there. Refraction is the one we're going to be using today. Refraction is where a wave changes speed as it goes from one medium to another. We talked about this in the context of for example water waves when water waves go from deep water go into shallow water if they hit it at an angle then the bit of the water uh, water wave that hits the shallow water first is going to slow down first and then the bit on the other side is going to overtake it causing the whole wave to bend this happens with a uh, light wave as well as we're going to find out and diffraction is the other one it's just where wave spreads out as it goes through a gap that doesn't really occur to us today so as I said, light also refracts, and it refracts as it goes through a different surface. Speed of light, I told you, is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Strictly speaking, that's only in a vacuum. But as it goes through something like glass or water, then it slows down. And this causes light to bend as it goes from one medium to another. As you can see here, there's a beam of light that's in air. So, I mean, it's acting pretty close to a vacuum. So it's going very fast. As it hits the glass, it slows down, and the bit of light on this side is going to slow down first. The bit of light on that side is going to overtake it, and it's going to cause a bending uh, inside the medium. Now, as it comes out of the medium, it's actually going to bend the other way, because it's going from a slow medium to a fast medium, so the angle actually increases. And you can see that this beam of light is parallel with that beam of light. But this is called refraction. The other effect of that is when you are looking in water and the thing you're looking at isn't actually there. If you've ever seen a straw in a glass of water and it looks bent, well, again, it's because the light, um, this is an example of, of a fish, you know, if you're trying to spear fish, the light is coming out of the object like the fish, and as it hits the surface of the water, the light is actually speeding up, and so it bends away from it. Now, we kind of see it like the fish is right there, but actually the fish is underneath it. So if you're ever in a survival situation, need to spear fish, um, you know, come the apocalypse, then make sure you're aiming underneath the object, right, in order to get it. All right, so this brings us to lenses. Now, lenses uh, come in two flavors, uh, just like we had with mirrors, where we have convex lenses, uh, which is where you have the curve on the outside, and concave lenses. They are called spherical lenses because they work the exact same way as mirrors do. They are spherical. If you can imagine, uh, this is going to keep going to make a perfect sphere all the way around here. Same with this one on the inside. Uh, and that means, just like mirrors, they're going to have that same focal point, and they're going to have that same center of curvature. So let's uh, talk about these uh, individually. I'm actually going to start with the concave lens. A concave lens is also called a diverging lens because as the light comes in, all of the light waves slow down and they reflect, refract outwards from the focal point. This is a really good image. I like this image because it shows that all the light spreads out as it comes through the lens, but it also shows how all of that light is spreading out from the focal point on the same side. Um, some of the light actually reflects back and it kind of acts as a mirror, which is why you see these beams here. But of the light that goes through, it all spreads out away from the focal point. That is a diverging lens. This is, incidentally, if you are like me and you are, uh, I forget, uh, nearsighted, so I can't see things far away, I need glasses to see you know, objects far away, then that is uh, the kind of lens I have. I have a diverging lens. The other type of lens is more like your reading glasses, and this is your converging lens. And this is where we have a convex lens, right? So it's kind of fat in the middle and skinny on, on the uh, outsides of it. All of that light that comes in parallel now diverges, or co sorry, correction, converges towards the central focal point, uh, and then keeps going out from the other side. This is kind of your reading glasses. This is your magnifying glasses. Um, it all converges towards the focal point. So I always like to include this because, uh, yeah, I always have a go at Mr. Tolley about this. Oops. 
if you've ever seen uh, or read Lord of the Flies, the the character Piggy, um, they kind of ended up stealing his glasses and beating him up, and I think they killed him in the end because they needed his glasses to make fire. But it didn't make any sense because Piggy was nearsighted; he could not see far away. Well, actually, his glasses would have looked like mine. They would have done that, and they would have been terrible at starting a fire. But someone with reading glasses or a magnifying glass, you can kind of now see how it can start a fire. <clears throat> with all that sun's rays coming in, it focuses up onto a tiny point where it gets very, very hot and starts a fire, just like we were able to do with the mirror. So I just throw that in there. I just think it's interesting. I always like to give Mr. Tolly a hard time about that. So the next thing I want to talk about is more of a by the by. Uh, you don't have to write this down. I just think it's kind of silly to talk about lenses and not talk about this. And that is how does your eye work? Well, it turns out that your eye has a lens in it right at the front, right in, inside the a uh, little black bit right in the center of your eye there there is a lens and it's full of this kind of tissue material uh, that acts as a spherical lens and it actually acts as a converging lens so the interesting thing is uh, if you look at the ray diagram if you're looking at an object far away the rays come in they refract through uh, refract you know parallel rays refract through the focus um, kind of follows the exact same procedure we had last time and it forms an inverted real image right at the back of your eye and then you have a whole bunch of cells back here uh, your rods and cones and i forget which one's which but one's better at picking up colors and one's better at picking up like low intensity light um and it actually puts the image on the back of your eye and your cells pick that up convert it to a electrical signal so we can see it so that's how your eye works it's got a lens in it so what happens if you have bad eyes like me well if you are nearsighted like I am nearsighted, what happens is you actually have too much material in this lens. The, the lens in your eye is almost too heavy duty. So it brings the object uh, forward away from your uh, the cells at the back of your eye. So that's why it's kind of blurry. It's not quite in focus. So the way we correct that is give you diverging lenses to kind of push that image further back so it hits the cells. Or you can get the laser surgery, which is where you get a, a doctor with a laser beam goes in and he actually cuts out a lot of this material to kind of uh, decrease the size of the lens, um, which is scary. And I, I, I should do it one day, but uh, I don't think I will. Incidentally, I have astigmatism in my eye, which squishes the eye. So even if they did do that, because my eye is not perfectly round, it's more of a football shaped, then that is also not putting the image right in the cells. But that's um, nearsightedness. Farsightedness is the opposite. Your, your eye is either too um, uh, squished this way, so it's like an upright football, or the lens just doesn't have enough material in it. So we basically have to replace that with a, an extra lens to make sure the image is right on the cells. Uh, you can't do any laser surgery for... Um, sorry, farsightedness, so reading glasses, because, you know, you you really need to add more cells there, more material uh, to make the lens bigger. So that's why we have to have the lens on the outside. Anyway, I just think that's an interesting by the by. Okay, so the, uh, we can do ray diagrams for lenses. I don't think, I mean, you can do it. I don't think we're going to do it because it's a pain in the butt and uh, it just takes a load of time. So we're going to skip that. But I do want to talk about refraction and light. Um Light, uh, I think we talked about this in the excellent presentations we had the other day. White light is made up of all the colors of the rainbow. This this uh, simple, you, you've heard of RBG, uh, red, blue, green. Uh, just using those uh, lights in different concentrations, we can make all the colors of the spectrum, uh, including white. Right. So white light that we see as white light contains all the frequencies of the visible spectrum. Um, so that means a couple of interesting things happens. Number one we can actually split those lights into a rainbow. How do we do that? Well, all we have to do is we have the white light come in. It turns out that different colors go different speeds inside a different medium. Red goes pretty fast inside a medium, but the other end of the visible spectrum, violet, actually slows down quite a lot. This Giphy GIF actually shows that pretty well. Well, it turns out the amount that the light bends is dependent on the speed it goes in the medium. Because red doesn't bend that much, uh, sorry, because red doesn't slow down that much, it doesn't bend that much, whereas violet, because it slows down a lot more, it bends a lot more. And then because we have it uh, bending going through this way, and then we have it hitting another angle, it finally splits the light into the colors of the spectrum. And this is exactly what happens in a, a raindrop, although the mechanism is slightly different. I'll, I'll try and show you that in a second. So the uh, the exact same thing happens in a raindrop if you're looking at a rainbow. 
uh, the white light comes in, it kind of acts as a prism where the red doesn't go as fast, uh, uh, sorry, the red goes faster than the violet inside the raindrop, and it actually internally reflects off the other side of the raindrop, and then comes out to the other side and then reflects out. Um, there, there's something called a critical angle, and if it hits under that critical angle, uh, then it's just going to reflect instead of refract. Uh, and then it comes out. So a raindrop is actually formed sort of 40 to 42 degrees from um, behind the shadow. I would take you outside normally and demonstrate this, but obviously I can't. Um, but let me just show you the other image here. Um, this is your observer. So if the sun is right behind you and the shadow of the observer is there, then you're going to find that the rainbow forms 40 to 42 degrees um, with the sun on your back. And it's only a rainbow, because te technically it should be a rain circle, right? In fact, I've got a picture of a rain circle here taken from a plane. Um, you can see it actually goes all the way around. It's just there's no earth in the way. Or even if you look at uh, Niagara Falls here, you can see the rainbow kind of actually goes all the way around because it doesn't hit the ground. All right, final thing. Why, why, why are certain colors certain colors? Why is red red? Why is blue blue? Well, um, again, white light is made up of all the colors of the spectrum. If you're looking at something like this red polo shirt, what's happening is all of this light is hitting the red polo shirt. Only thing is, all of these colors are getting absorbed by that polo shirt. Red, on the other hand, is getting reflected out, so you only see red. Same with the shorts. All of these colors are getting absorbed into the shorts. Apart from this blue, this blue gets reflected out, and so we see that color as blue. And I think the interesting things about that is if you're seeing something that's white, then all of these colors are going in, hitting the object and reflecting out uh, as all of the colors. So we see it as white. And the alternative is black. And I just like this image. Uh, when we have got uh, black, then all of the colors are being absorbed. This is Vanta black. It's like the blackest black. They, they painted over this bust with this blackest black color. And you can see, you cannot make out any features of this. Um, it's like 99.9975, I looked it up, uh, percent absorbance. So all of these colors are being absorbed. And we just see this like whole, <laughs> whole of color right there. Uh, and that's what black is. So that's it. I'm going to call it for today. Um, make sure you get your notes down. I'll post the PDFs on the slides as well if you don't want to hear me talk. Totally understand. Uh, and then tomorrow we're going to be doing a study guide for the test on Monday. Okay. I hit the button too early. Have a good one and I'll uh, catch you guys later.